Hey everybody, what's going on? My name's Alex. Welcome back to my little corner of the internet. Today, we're going to be talking about hard cases, and in particular, the Gator TSA electric guitar hard case. So this case will run you about a hundred and anywhere from between 110 to 125 pounds, depending on the vendor that you get it from in the United Kingdom, uh, convert it to your local currency. So what makes this a premium product? You know, there are a lot of people say, oh, hang on a minute, you can get a, you can get a hard case for 60 or 70 pounds. And we're going to talk about that as well and sort of explain why this is a bit more of a premium product. So this particular case, it says it's TSA approved, which, you know, may not really apply to the United Kingdom or somewhere not in America. But a lot of the fundamentals that come with that tag are actually kind of astute and, and still relevant. So the material is TSA approved and it's also military grade. Now, anyone who's got any kind of semblance of normalcy in their head will know that military grade means this is the person that did it for the cheapest. However, this is a premium product from Gator because they actually have a level below this kind of case and those initial sort of entry level hard cases will run you about 65 to 80 pounds depending on the manufacturer and depending on where you buy them from. The reason that you have the entry level cases is because these ones are often made from plywood and then wrapped in some kind of faux leather. I've got an Epiphone case downstairs for my Gibson V and it's exactly like that. It's thin, it's thin plywood and it's wrapped in this, this fake leather stuff. And while it can be good for local stuff and keeping things in you know, quite personal areas of storage. If I was going to put something into more long-term storage, I wouldn't necessarily trust one of those cheaper cases to properly look after my guitar properly, especially with, you know, sharp objects and the, the fabric can tear and all that kind of thing. Uh, with this Gator, what is it, the Gator GTSA electric guitar case, uh, it is made from uh, an ATA molded military grade polyethylene outer shell. So when you look at some of the uh, of the other more premium brands or, or I guess the named branded guitar cases, if you're looking at Jacksons and Charvels and Fenders and other, um, other, other brands that make proper hard shell cases as well, it's this molded plastic which not only keeps the size down, but also adds an added layer of protection. As I said before, with those less expensive cases, all you've got is leather or faux leather before you get through to some relatively flimsy wood, and anyone can just stab some into that, and you know you run very real risk of it going through and damaging your guitar. Uh, it's got a TSA approved locking central latch, ideal for air travel. So essentially that means it's got a latch on the front here, uh, we'll take a look at that in a second, where you can lock it with a key, and you can keep that key on you and it stops anyone getting into the case uh, unless they have the key. What else has it got? It's got a universal fit EPS protective foam interior nest thick and it's a black plush interior. So this is kind of generic filling for your guitar cases, uh, although I, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about what's inside the guitar case and the quality of the finish uh, as, we, as we work through the video. Uh, it's got metallic hinges, uh, the body dimensions are, uh, what's it, 2.8? That makes no sense. Um, I'll pop the dimensions uh, in a link down below. Um, this will fit most uh, T and S style guitars, so your Stratocasters, your Telecasters. Um, they, there are other cases in this series that Gator make that are specifically catered for more exotic guitar shapes, so they do ones, uh, they also do these for bass as well. Uh, as well as Flying V's Explorers, specifically for shapes like Gibson Les Pauls. So those are available as well. So I paid around £110 for this, and I currently use it to store my new Jackson in. Um, the dimensions are, are small, it's nice compared to, again, when you start looking at some of the other larger guitar cases where they feel like you have to have monstrous, spa monstrous space and they get really unwieldy and big. This is nice and compact. This is maybe, what, maybe a few inches longer than my uh, than the guitar that it stores. And for that reason alone, it not only feels rock solid, it also doesn't take up a lot of space as well. So if you've got a, uh, a number of guitars at home, or limited storage space, you can have all of those guitars stored in a relatively 
small space compared to, as I said, your explorer hard cases, your base cases. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to have a dive in and we are going to see what it's like inside. Alright, so now let's have a look at some of the specifics of this particular case. So, Gator, as well as other brands, Epiphone, Fender, Gibson, they will all do one type of case, and then they'll do the more premium type of case. Now this, with the molded plastic, is the more premium type of case. It's this molded plastic that you see on the SKU branded uh, cases. You see Jackson, Charvel, Fender do their own versions of this as well, as, as well as a lot of high-level boutique cases that all have this molded plastic, and it feels so secure. Um, I don't know how well this translates across in camera, but the feel of it is so much more premium in almost every detail. So looking on the back here, we've got metal hinges, we've got travel feet, so when you put it down, it's not resting on the hinges if you have it vertically, so you can say, oh, you can rest it like that. Um, it might not balance properly because it's on uh, it's not resting on the table properly but th but there we go so you can see it's standing up like that and then that isn't resting on the hinges at the bottom looking across the top you've got a soft grip handle there this is just some kind of semi molded plastic which it's it's markedly different from the uh, from the case plastics but it just gives it that nice kind of handheld feel there as well we've got three latches on the case. Two of them just pop up like that, nice and easy. The third one has actually got a TSA approved lock on it, whatever that means. So I guess the TSA is the Travel Safety Authority over in America. Um, the case comes with a couple of keys for this and it's got locked and not locked so you can see which direction it's going in. And from there, works exactly the same as the other two, you can just pop that bad boy open. Down here, You've even got a nice little identity card so you can write your name on it, which is, it, it, it's not much, but it's a nice touch. And then all the way around, you've got this sort of, again, this metal sort of uh, edging around where the case opens. So a lot of thought has gone into this case and uh, for, the, for the premium that you do pay on it compared to the, the lower, I, I don't want to say the lower type of case, but for the, for the less premium kind of case where it is essentially just plywood wrapped in faux leather, this one is, is far and away superior. So let's crack it open. So each of these just opens like that and the hinges do feel so, so secure. Again, one of the things that I really like about this more, this more expensive case, and again, I'm, I'm gonna wrap up my thoughts in the end, but the way that the case feels, not only to the touch, but also to how it looks as well. So let's open it up inside. You can see here that I've got my Jackson DK2 and some of the things that I want to point out about the case inside. It's got the plush lining which feels very nice. Something to check out for on guitar cases with this plush lining. Always give them a little bit of a push in there. Now it's fine to hear a little bit of crinkling but if you hear too much crinkling when you push against that, what that can mean is that this plush lining hasn't been suitably attached to the uh, the underside of the exterior of the case. And if that starts coming off, it reduces the overall protection of the case and that can lead to your instrument bouncing around in transit. And you don't really want that, do you? It's got this, uh, it's got a little, um, sort of strap to stop the case bowling over um, which is nice holds it in place although mine is twisted but you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get a little detail like that get that you know me all up in arms um, but you know it's it's a little quirk let's say something that I am quite surprised about here is the storage space now this is probably something that Gator have done to save a little bit of money which is absolutely fine um, we've got two storage slots here so let me try and do this as I did this yesterday. So let me let me get my uh, let me get my um my strap here. So if I put my strap like that in there, it's actually too high. So there are times where you do have to get maybe a little bit inventive if you want to put your strap in there. But again, it's not 
it's not, not that much of an issue. You can press that down. You can pop strings in there. You can pop all kinds of accessories, capos, spare strings, batteries, whatever. And because, again, up on the top here, what they've done is they've actually really paid attention to this. If you feel up on the top here, you've got the contour where the neck is supported and protected. But these bits here actually stand out like little raised platforms. So when the case is closed, whatever is in these two pots here is going to be secured and stable. So you don't have to worry about anything jumping around while it's in transit. Up at the top, we have got a nice big wide area for our headstock to, uh, to rest. Now, something to note, and I tested this on my Fender Squire as well, that this goes... My Fender Squire goes right up to the edge here. So, if you can see, I can run my pen down the end like that, okay? I can run it down the end like that. I can't do that with my Fender Squire. So, the Fender fits much more tightly than this uh, Jackson DK2 does. So, there is a little bit of wiggle room there, but there is by no way enough wiggle room for me to be concerned about the security of this guitar in transit. So what's interesting as well and what's really really nice is that this space up here also supports uh, reverse headstocks as well and if you've got I don't want to say it would support something like a Razorback model um, but there is certainly adequate support here for your Dean headstocks as well the ones that have like the uh, the external v-shapes if you're into that kind of thing. So let's take the guitar out get caught on there and let's have a look at how it's supported along the bottom of the case again we've got this plush lining here which feels really nice you press down on it you can't hear any bubbling at all there is even some nice extra layered protection here we've got a slight increase along the contour line up here for the neck so as the guitar is raised up from here and that's even nice it's got and a very very subtle indent here as well so if, if you've got a back plate um, on your guitar where you know you've got your springs inside and that what have you it's got an ever so subtle dent there that just allows that plastic uh, that plastic uh, sort of uh, cutaway to to rest and and not, and not be a f and not hold up the rest of the body that's that's a really nice uh, bit of attention to detail there so we've got a vaguely square space here so it can accommodate a couple of different uh, designs of body. What you're not going to be able to get in here uh, is your Explorer shapes, your Flying V's obviously, uh, some of your bigger Gibson guitar shapes so make sure that you measure this out and you look at the, uh, the, the manufacturer's website before you start buying these because even though it says it'll support most S type and T types and to be honest I think it will you could probably get your your Ibanez and your um, your Charvels and your Jacksons as I've demonstrated as well as you know some of your more normal shaped Deans and you know PRS and that kind of thing all of these will fit in here but just make sure you check on the manufacturer's website for the for the dimensions as well and uh, as I said I, I gave the uh, specific dimensions a little bit earlier in this video but all in all we've got some lovely storage space here and what we'll do is we'll just zoom in a little bit on some of the detailing. But this is what I was talking about before. This is the uh, the headstock end. So you can see we've got this nice little V shape here to accommodate not only our normal shaped headstocks but our reverse headstocks as well. Hopefully zooming in on this a little bit more will give you an idea of the kind of material. It's that general kind of fluffy inside guitar stuff it's not quite it doesn't feel quite as synthetic or as fluffy as uh, some some Gibson models but um, I actually find that to be more beneficial I've got an Epiphone case downstairs for my flying V and I find the fluff is just yeah, it's just kind of annoying you can see we've got a nice little lip here for where our uh, for where our neck can sit so we've got a nice little contour out for neck for your neck there so this easily both fits my squire and uh, and my jackson so the jackson's got quite a flat neck the squire's got a little bit more of a traditional c neck both of them fit absolutely fine so let's have a bit more of a look at the body end of the case before we wrap up with our final thoughts so you can see here that we've got more of the same material and I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's this little bot, there's this little um, backplate contour in here as well. That again, I just think that's a really nice touch. It's the kind of thing that someone would overlook. 
um, if they were just designing something straight out. And then as a final thought, we're going to close the case and we're going to have a, a little bit more of an in-depth look or, or a closer look at the, uh, at the locks. So let's just uh, mosey down and just zoom in slightly. So you can see here, this is allegedly TSA travel approved something or other. And, you know, it's it's probably probably one of those things when they say, oh, this is military approved and that kind of thing. But again, this, these feel really, all three of them feel really, really sturdy. And I've got no problems with these at all. And then, of course, you've got the handle as well. So again, very, very sturdy handle. Um, there is, there is not a lot of bad I can say about this case, truth be told. It's certainly surprised me at how robust it is. And again, you know, looking looking at the overall product, it's sleek. It's, you know, it's unassuming. It's not big and gaudy or anything like that. Um, I'd, yeah, it's fantastic. Anyway, that's a quick tour of the case. Let's wrap up with our final thoughts. I know that Gator are, are one of those companies that people sometimes look down on like like stag for guitar cables and, and other bits and pieces but in in all seriousness this is this is a really really good case i wouldn't be saying that if i mean i bought this with my own money this isn't a sponsored video and if i didn't like it it would have gone back already that you know when i go playing shows or when i go to practice i would have no qualms putting my putting my guitars in this and taking them to shows with me and leaving them in a storage area, acclimatizing in this case. Gig bags, I can do a whole other video on, on gig bags because you get the, the, the quality of gig bags is so up and down. But then again, you know, just like the quality of, of hard cases can, can be up and down. And in terms of the pricing, as, as I said um, earlier, I paid about 100, £110 for this. Um, you can... You, you can find that around that price range um, and even even the ones that are branded so I know that Charvel have one I know that Jackson do one I know that there isn't uh, a proper SKU branded one and a couple of other uh, premium companies as well that do uh, charge that um, do charge that high, uh, higher price but in all seriousness I have had a, Sh a Charvel hard case before uh, admittedly it was an 80s one but the the, the quality of these is rock solid and if you're if you're not looking for gig bags especially with um, there are some fender models that will come with a gig bag and it is literally just a plastic sack that you put the guitar into and it offers no protection whatsoever and you know stuff gets chucked around when you're on the road stuff gets uh, you know stuff you know gig bags get torn and, and all that kind of thing and I just think that investing in a decent guitar case for a decent guitar it just gives you that level of of security that level of satisfaction to say hey my stuff's gonna be all right in here and this 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 case it's kind of weird it, it's almost exceeded my expectations but I've not taken it out of the house yet because of everything that's currently going on but for storing a guitar it's it, it's just great it, it feels solid um, it doesn't feel like it's gonna crap out on me anytime soon and as, yeah, I would be, I'd be more than more than happy and secure in the knowledge that if I was to take this out on the road, throw it in the back of my car, that my my guitar my guitars would be safe in them. So I know cases aren't terribly exciting, but it's all this stuff you have got to kind of think about when you accessorize your guitars. You know, good quality cables, a good good quality case, you know, decent strings, all that kind of stuff. It's it's sort of you've got the main you've got the, the main thing on the plate, but you've got to have all your side dishes as well. And a case is certainly an essential one. Let me know what you think of this case. If you've got other hard cases, how you think they compare, and whether or not that getting these molded plastic ones really are worth that little extra bit of cash that uh, that that you have to pay out over some of the uh, some of the uh, the plywood and the and, and the faux leather band ones. Until then, guys, my name has been Alex. This has been my little corner of the internet. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. And I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye for now.